Thank you for watching our video on how to clerk an auction using the GavelBuddy Auction Program. In this video, we will go over the basics of the clerking process and many of the useful features of the clerking page. So the first thing I want to do is enter in my username and password and click on Login. Once I've successfully logged in, I'll click on the Live Auction and then the Clerking option. From the drop-down, I will select the auction that I'm wanting to clerk from. Select the Select Auction button. And now I have my clerking screen where I can begin clerking items. As you can see here, the seller column is automatically selected uh, when I enter the clerking screen. So it's asking me for a seller number. So let's say seller number one is selling a box of stuff. I would put in box of stuff for the title. I would put in a price of, let's say it was $2. And it was sold to buyer number one. I put in buyer number one, hit enter automatically enters the item into the system and shows up down below here under the edit existing items. So as you add items this will continue to populate down below. Okay. One thing to notice the seller field is automatically highlighted again and I can either tab over and enter in another box of stuff for the same seller which I will do now for three dollars to buyer number one or on the next item I can actually change that seller number to something else. So in this case, let's say I'm not selling to seller number one anymore, I'm selling to seller number two. I don't have to delete it or backspace or do anything. I just literally hit the number two and it changes it in that field for me. So I'll put in another item sold for $5 and this one sold to buyer number three. So for the sake of example, I'm going to go through and clerk a few items just to show you how quickly you can navigate through the clerking screen. So you just keep on clerking through your items as the auction's going, and as you can see, they're all populating down here. Now, if you wanted to change the quantity on an, uh, an item that you're entering in, so seller number one is selling a um, box of new toys for $2, under number three, and they bought two of them, you just change the quantity to two, hit enter, and it enters the item down below. All right. Uh, if you're wondering what the on-site or the type is where it says on-site or online, this is for folks that have online auctions, you know, do webcast auctions where they have both an uh, in-house crowd as well as an online crowd. Uh, GavelBuddy actually offers GavelBuddy Live that allows you to have that type of auction if you're interested. So you can take a look at that once this video is over with. But anyway, you can specify whether the item sold to your uh, folks on-site or if it's sold to the the people online. So it's strictly for informational purposes. After an auction you can go back and see what all sold on site and online. If you don't sell anything online you just leave that alone and it, it doesn't matter to you. Uh, the fee is if you have any buyers fees. Uh, we have some auction companies that use the software that charge a fee for uh, let's say absentee bids. So if there's a dollar fee to place an absentee bid and they win the item you can put that fee in there and then that's charged to the buyer when they go to cash out. The taxable field, this is useful for, let's say you're selling vehicles. Um, some states don't require you to pay the sales tax until you actually go and license the vehicle. So if this person bought 10 different items throughout the auction and they have a vehicle that they purchased that's not taxable and all the, the other nine items they bought are taxable, you could change this to yes or no. So the vehicle would be set to no for taxable and then when they cash out at the end of the night all of their items that were uh, taxable they'll get taxed on. All the items that they weren't taxable that aren't taxable they won't get taxed. One more important note that I would like to mention here in regards to tax if you're anytime you're 
buyer in Gavel Buddy is exempt from tax, that overrides this field. So if a, if a buyer is tax exempt, they'll never get charged tax regardless of what this field is set to. This is just for specific cases where an item isn't taxable to anybody. Like a, the item category field is for auction companies that do category based commissions. Um, there's other videos that we offer that explain that a little more in depth, but if you just do a general uh, commission based auction that's, that's based off of uh, a sliding scale or just a straight commission, the item category is probably not something you'll use, so you can disregard that. It was again, it's strictly for auction companies that do category-based commissions. Okay. All right. So you also have the copy last item button here. So if I click on that, it'll automatically populate this field with the item I just sold, with the exception of the price, or excuse me, the buyer. So I copy the last item. It puts in the seller number, the title what it sold for, the quantity, and it's just asking me for a new buyer. So whoever won that item, I would put that in there and then hit enter. If I use the copy last item and I want to change the price, I just simply tab back, change it to, uh, let's say, $4, put in a buyer of one, maybe I want the quantity to be three, and then I just hit enter. See, So you can quickly go through and add things as you go through your auction. All right, down below here, this gives you the last item, add, edited, or deleted. So let's say I delete item number one. This is going to tell me that I deleted that item. Now, let's say I, I didn't want to, to de delete number one, but it was an accident and we removed it and we want to get it back. This will allow me, under the last item, added, edited, or deleted, it will allow me to add that lot back. So I just simply click add lot again and it puts it back in to the system for me. So it's just kind of another way to, it's just kind of a safety net in the event that you made a change and you uh, didn't, didn't want to do that. And it'll also allow you to make changes to the item too. Let's say I wanted to make it test item two. I could click save and as you can see it changes it down here. Okay. So it's, it just to let, it just lets you know what the last thing you did on the clerking screen is and allows you to make modifications. Another way you can make modifications to items is just simply coming down here and changing the information down below here in the edit existing items field. So if I wanted to change this to $5, I would just hit five and enter. Let's say I wanted to change lot number two here. Uh, the buyer number was actually two, so I would just change it to two, hit enter and it will automatically update the field for me. All right. Let's say that we wanted to do a pre-cataloged auction. So for the sake of an example, I'm going to I'm going to delete the um, information out of these fields. I'm going to set this up so I can show you what a pre-cataloged auction would look like. What I'm doing here is just removing the, the information out here for example's sake. Because if you had a pre-cataloged auction, these items would all be in here and they wouldn't have a price or a winning uh, buyer. So if I was doing a pre-cataloged auction, all I have to do is change the price. So let's say this sold for $2 and it sold to bidder number one. I put in bidder number one. I hit enter. It automatically, notice how it automatically takes me down to the next item needing to be sold. So then I simply put in three here for the selling price. This one sold to bidder number two. Now I'm on item number three. That sold for $55. Buyer number three, and there was two of them. Hit enter. And it would just keep going to the next item. As I sell the previous item, it just jumps to the next item. And, and it'll do that throughout the entire auction. So one of the things that comes up quite a bit when we're uh, going over the clerking screen is what happens if I enter in uh, a buyer or bidder or a seller that doesn't exist. So in this case, we'll go ahead and put in buyer number 3333333, hit enter. 
and you'll see up here at the top it tells you that it's not updated because the buyer that we entered is not correct and that if we want to add that buyer we need to go and check them into the auction all right so if I go here to my last item add added edited or deleted it tells me what I put in there so then I can quickly just change it if I want to to three which is what I meant to put in there hit save and that's it so it'll autom automatically update the item after that all right there's also a uh, down here on the edit existing items if I had a pre cataloged auction I can split items if I need to so if I click on split it will pop up a screen that will let me split that item up into as many as I want so you know if it was I wanted to sell one to bidder number two and then I wanted to sell one to bidder number one I could do that and I can just keep splitting it Bidder number three bought another one six 36 maybe bought something you know I could just keep on splitting the rows up and and moving through it okay and then I would just click submit all and it would add all the items into the into the clerking screen all right so let's move this back all right then to to delete an item from the screen you just simply click on delete and I will delete it from the, the menu here so if I want to delete number two just click delete and as you can see it disappears out of our list another nice uh, function down here that's handy is you can actually sort by item you can sort by title price buyer all you got to do is click on these headings and it'll automatically sort the items and then as you continue to add items it will stay sorted that way one of the ways that I see a lot of auction companies using the sort functionality is over here with the item number a lot of times people want to see the most recent item they added so by clicking on the item number uh, column header it will stay uh, sorted with the most recent item that I added so let's go up here and let's pretend we're doing item number 11 I hit enter if you can see it'll automatically drop it down here and that'll be the first item on the list so that's another way to kind of see what the last 10 items were that you uh, sold if you, you know by clicking on this item number tab it'll sort that stuff and show you the most recent things that you've sold All right, so the next thing that we'll go over is the pass outs or choice tab and what this allows you to do is quickly add pass outs or choice items out. So let's say I've got a box of stuff and the first first one sold for five dollars to bidder number one for and they only bought one. So then by hitting the F8 key it'll split that out and I can change uh, the, the buyer to something else and, and then also I can change the quantity if I want to. So in this case, same thing, box of stuff sold, it sold for $5, it was buyer number two. Hit the down arrow or the F8 key and I can select buyer number three. They bought five of them. Number one, they bought five, or two, you know, and so on. So you can just keep going to on and on and then just hit F9 or click the submit all button and it will submit all of the, the um, items that you're passing out or choicing out. All right, another thing it does, same thing, if I put in a, a bidder number that's incorrect and I submit all of these, it's going to take all of the correct ones, but it's going to let me know that this one is not an on-site buyer and let me change it. So I can change that to, let's you know, say two, and then submit all again. And now everything's in the system successfully. And you can see all the items listed here. Now if I need to search for an item, Let's say somebody wanted to know the price of an item that sold in a previous auction, but they couldn't tell you anything other than it was a, a pickup truck. You could put in pickup truck here, select item title, and search all, and it will search all of your auctions until you, it comes up with a pickup truck. You know, or you could select specific auction dates to search for things. You can also search by buyer, seller. 
There's a lot of different things you can use to find uh, items from previous auctions or existing auctions. A couple other things that we want to go over here before uh, we're done is the sold items backup button. When I click on that, it automatically opens up another tab in my browser. So up above here, I can click on my tabs. Here's my clerking screen, and then I got a tab that just opened up that actually updates itself every five minutes throughout the auction with my current totals. So it gives me all the stuff we've sold. It gives me my winning bidder totals, my seller totals, and it keeps it nice and condensed so that I don't waste a lot of paper or ink. Um, but it, it gives me that opportunity to print that backup that in the event that your computer fails you or you have some other technical issue, you have this backup to go to so you don't actually lose anything and you're not scrambling around trying to figure out what to do because you have your backup okay so and a, a lot of our auction companies that use this they actually have maybe the cashier just print this every once in a while they'll have it running on their machine and just remind them to print it occasionally so that they're covered in the event that there's an outage alright so back on our main clerking screen You've got the Quick Lot Printout button, which I'll go over that briefly. If you click on that, that basically pops up a screen that allows you to print a hard copy of all the items that you have listed. This is particularly useful for auctions that pre-catalog all of their items, and it uh, gives them, and you know, in the event they want to manually write down information, they can write down the price, the quantity, the bidder. All right, back to the main clerking screen. You've got a pre-bid printout button that will print out any pre-bids that you have entered in Gavel Buddy. If you go to live auction and pre-bids you can enter in uh, absentee bids or pre-bids that people leave and this allows you to print that out so maybe you could give it to your ringman or the auctioneer letting them know that hey we have a pre-bid on certain items uh, just as a reminder. Customer catalog. This catalog will come complete with pictures, the title, um, lot number, the information that the customer would need to know. It prints out a nice catalog for them to have during the auction in the event you want to use that. The auctioneer catalog is similar but it doesn't have the pictures and it shows a reserve amount or a pre-bid if there is one. So you could give that catalog to your auctioneer as a reference during the auction as well. So that basically concludes uh, the video on how to clerk auctions using Gavel Buddy. Uh, if you have additional questions or would be interested in maybe using our software, please go to www.gavelbuddy.com and fill out the contact us form or give us a call. Our phone number is also on the website. We would enjoy talking about uh, Gavel Buddy and what it could do to help out your auction company. Thank you.